Hey guys, welcome to me reacting to Game Theory. Did Reddit just solve FNAF by the Game Theorist? Now, I have not seen this, but I actually have no idea what this is going to be. This is another FNAF theory, and I haven't really been reacting to the Game Theorist mainly because the fact that, I don't know, I feel like they haven't really had many interesting videos. Not only that, I feel like MatPat doesn't actually really like reaction channels, which is fair. Honestly, I understand him. But, um, yeah, honestly, I don't really know how Reddit solved FNAF. I mean, can't wait to see how they did. But yeah, anyways, guys, we're from the description. Make sure to the game through this so thing. Let's just get right into it. Jay, now. Jay, can you hear me, Jay? What did you do today, Jay? I went to the movies. We watched a scary one. It was so scary that I jumped out of my seat and spilled my popcorn everywhere. Did you do that, Jake? Were you there? Jake. Jake. Then I went to the arcade. I ate a bunch of pizza there. I got red tomato sauce all over my mouth and more red on my What clothes. the heck is this there opening scene? There were so many scene. other kids there, and then there weren't. I love you, Jake. You know that, right? I love you. Oh, wait. Is this about the new book? Yeah, wasn't there a book, a new book? Open it. Open it. Open it. Open it. Damn it, Jake. Jump scare? No, okay. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, where today the theory Ooh, is I like that from you. Pixel. That's right. Just because we're all still waiting for Security Breach to release doesn't mean that FNAF theorists out there have been twiddling their thumbs. In fact, yeah, so is this about the new, new books, or is this just about like a Reddit thing? Over all hmm. the pieces that were in place for us before. Pieces that we might have overlooked or missed the first time out. And it was this thorough re-review of the clues that prompted what may be the biggest fan theory to blow up in over a year. And that's saying a lot since 20 2020 was full of us connecting massive pieces of this franchise's lore. I mean, with the help of Fazbear's Frights, throughout last year's videos, we managed to pinpoint the year of the missing children's incident as 1985. We solidly connected Foxy Bro to Michael Afton. We even concluded the high likelihood that two spirits are trapped inside Golden Freddy, not just one. Our vengeful spirit, Cassidy, as well as our Bite of 83 victim, the Crying Child. But uh, have you ever noticed that that kid doesn't have a name? I mean, it's been six years since he was introduced into the franchise in FNAF 4, and we still don't have any hints as to what crying child's name might actually be when he's, you know, experiencing literally any other emotion. Wait, is that, is that crying child? But no, that's happy child, and that's angry child, and that's confused child. That's wow, I really love this child. bit. This is really child. funny. Nope, it's not, not like not they took one. them Ooh, like one second to come up with child? this. Hashtag relatable there. But really, take a moment to think about that. We know the puppet's name, Charlie, and her father, Henry. We know that baby was originally Elizabeth Wait, Afton, so this is just a fan theory Travis that's gotten Will popular Afton, and he's going to be talking about Michael it. Afton. There's the missing children's incident victims, Jeremy Fritz, Susie, Gabriel, and Cassidy, the vengeful spirit, who is at least one of the things trapped inside Golden Freddy. I mean, there is a name for pretty much every single character in this franchise, except for this one kid. The one kid who, wouldn't you know, was also important enough to have the first on-screen death of the series. Feels like we should probably be able to solve this one by now right like we should probably have gotten a name oh for it so that's what this the theory line. is that's or what this the theory is about the his means name by which to solve for his name the pieces have got to be in yeah. place for us right well today might just be the day where we solve exactly that <laughs> one sorry, sorry i'm an ass <laughs> 1740 sorry. kingdom thinks that they've cracked the code to finally solve the final name of the fnaf mystery to finally give the crying child the bite of 83 victim a proper identity so break out your tambourines theorists because it's morty time it's a theory review leave your theories in the comments below i'll pick my favorites in the next episode of morty now, today's theory starts where all the what? best theories begin. Dabbing Chica. That's right, folks. We're back. I mean, I get it. It's a PewDiePie reference, franchise. but it's, eh. Not any of the novels. Certainly not the games. Those are just afterthoughts at this point. Nope, it's back to the children's activity book, FNAF Survival Logbook. In a past FNAF theory, we had a huge revelation about how this thing works. Basically, there are three people present within this book. There's Mike, who's alive and always writes everything in red pen. There's Cassidy, who haunts the book 
and speaks in ghostly faded text, but there's a second spirit here, the crying child, who's forced to communicate by actually altering the words that are found in the book. The example that proves it is right here. Cassidy says, the party was for you, and the crying child responds on page 89 by altering the text of the book to read, it was for me. We know FNAF 4's party wasn't for Mike, and we know Cassidy wouldn't be saying this to themselves. As such, it must be crying child acknowledging what Cassidy has said. Okay. Same thing here on page 59 with Cassidy asking, what do you see? And crying child answering on page 109, I can't okay, that's see. Okay, that's interesting. That's interesting. The logbook. So that alone was pretty huge, and it went a long way to supporting the theory that both Cassidy and crying child possess Golden Freddy. And that alone would be pretty awesome. But it still leaves a major part of this book. Wait, unsolved. yeah, just like the stitch wraith, right? Where like I can't see, right? Didn't you talk about that before? Be crazy for years. It's a grid where you're told to draw an 8-bit foxy. Just another random activity in this children's workbook, right? Wrong. The grid is numbered, and you can see in faint print that you're supposed to put letters into the squares, with the first few already being put in. So in our quest to solve Golden Freddy's name years ago, we collected the page numbers where the phrase my name appeared, we added them together per the instructions hidden in the book, and then we plugged those coordinates into the foxy alphabet grid to get the name Cassidy. Good game, everyone. Let's all treat ourselves to some orange slices and give ourselves a pat on the back for solving another piece of the lore. Except that's not how it worked. You can imagine my surprise and confusion when the numbers got plugged yeah, into. Yeah, he didn't get it right. Grid that was he didn't get it right. Telegraphed to us, but rather the word search. Yeah. And apparently we were right to do that since Scott Cawthon himself confirmed in his FNAF movie announcement the critical role that a child named Cassidy plays within the lore. But all of this still means one thing. The alphabet grid is awkwardly left completely unused, despite it obviously needing to be used to solve one of the mysteries within this book. And that's where Wolfie... But here we go today! Yeah. In the book, there's one Cassidy question that's left hanging. On page 31, Cassidy asks, Do you remember your name? Uh, of course he does. He's the crying child duh crying child oh so it's gonna be uh, answered in the grid victim for short just rolls off the tongue but seeing that the logbook had helped to solve for cassidy's name wolfie suspected that it might also be helpful in solving this other name using you guessed it the foxy alphabet grid what wolfie noticed was that the crying child specifically uses the knight's four and five shift rating questionnaires to speak with cassidy for the first three nights the section reads as follows overall fulfillment health stress purpose hope and existential dread. But on nights four and five, you have other things mixed in here. Like, I'm scared, and it was for me. So Wolfie reverse engineered things, taking bite victims' answers and matching them to the page numbers where Cassidy asks the question. To quote from Wolfie's own post, the first one Dang. is, I can hear sounds. The page it's responding to is 75, which says, does he still talk to you? And one trend to notice is that all four pages have a piece of blood. So then he's gonna put Next it in the is, grid? It was for me, which is responding to page 103's question of, the party was for you. Third is I can't see, responding to page 59's what do you see? And last is I'm scared, which stumped me, so I went off of what I already had. End quote. He then fully filled out the Foxy chart with the alphabet, and going in the order that Bite Victim's answers appear, he followed the grid code to find the following four letters. E, V, A, N, Evan. Evan? After six years, could it possibly be that Evan is the name of the crying child? I honestly, I'm not sure. Or at least I'm not convinced off of this alone. Don't get me wrong, I don't think that this is a bad theory at all. Quite the contrary, in fact. Anything that tries to figure out the true purpose of that stupid foxy grid is gonna okay, get Okay, so in he's my gonna book. actually try and like is the methodology. You know, Throughout the book, Cassidy asks a lot like, of questions. Like, review but it, I guess? Four of them actually matter. Wolfie also points out the blood stains, but there are blood stains on a lot of the pages throughout this book, not just those four. And even then, an answer like, I can hear sound to the question of, does he still talk to you, it feels just a bit off. It's not very precise, you know? It feels random, arbitrarily trying to fit pieces together in a book that has been crafted to be anything but arbitrary. I mean, the Cassidy Code alone required you to find six numbers, find a page that points to another page on what to do with those six numbers, and then translate all six of them into the word search. Multi-step puzzles like this have to be precise in order to work. And while the puzzle pieces in Wolfie's theory certainly 
fit, they fit a bit loosely, you know? I mean, even Wolfie admits that finding the last N was a bit of a stretch, and it forced him to break his own methodology. In fact, another Freddit user, Godzilla813105, tried to correct for that to find the N in a different way. One of the other lingering threads of the book is a series of tally marks written by Mike that never quite add up to anything. They're never used, or at least their true use has never been discovered, but again, similar to the Foxy Grid, they must mean something, right? To quote from Godzilla's post, I realize that there's a magazine Foxy is holding on the first page of Night 1 that has 5-3 on it. When you add 5 and 3, you get 8. Then, I took every single tally mark set in the book and added them together. I got this from the idea of how the whole quiz thing at the end of the shift says tally up your score. Putting all of these together gets you 47. 47 on the Foxy grid gives you the letter N, end quote. Again, it sounds good on paper, and I love the attempt to make sense of it all, but the why of it just doesn't line up for me. Why add tally marks to really? this number on Foxy's magazine? How are those elements related? And why would they be connected to a completely different set of three numbers gotten from a completely different set of clues? Plus, the story just doesn't hold. Contrary to what Dang. Godzilla says, if Matt Pike gets attacked by Reddit, no that would suck. <laughs> at the end of those nightly surveys. Thus, the rationale just doesn't hold up. In short, it all feels like we're convinced that we have a solution to the problem, and we're trying to back our way into how to get there. This is classic confirmation bias, where, as you conduct research, you try and find sources to justify your belief, or you retrofit the data to fit the conclusion that you're looking for. And I should know about confirmation bias, because lots of our theories over the years play with that very concept. Mario is a villain, provided you ignore all the times that he saves the kingdom. You play as the king in Hollow Knight, as long as you squint really hard during this one cutscene that might disprove that. For me, theories like those are all about the true. Story. Connecting dots that Come on, you couldn't at least talk about the Sans's nest theory. The plot, That'd be hilarious. So sometimes go against what is much more likely and probably much more intended by the developer. And the theories that I tend to focus on are the ones where you can connect a surprising number of dots, even if one or two tend to disprove it. They're just meant to be fun thought experiments, you know? I like playing with the lore of these worlds. But here with FNAF, we have to be really careful. While I love both of these posts, FNAF theory Well, yeah, be true, because there's a huge fan things. base that would technically attack him if he accepted does canon. something wrong. And as a result, the methods by which we come to conclusions require more scrutiny. And here, the methodology of arriving at the name Evan just doesn't hold up as well as I'd like. But that doesn't mean the name Evan doesn't hold up. Because here's the twist, friends. This isn't just coming from the logbook. Shortly after Christmas, the Fazbear Frights book series released its latest installment, Blackbird, and it contains what is two. So now he's gonna talk about that. Okay. In this franchise. The real Jake, short story number two, tells the tale of nine-year-old Jake, who's dying as a result of a tumor in his brain. With his mother prematurely passed away and his father overseas in the military, Jake is under constant care by the young Margie. But there's one other special person in Jake's life, a mysterious figure named Simon, who speaks to him at night from a small cabinet in his room. Quote, the first night Simon had talked to Jake, Simon had made it clear he would be in the cabinet until Jake got well enough to walk to the cabinet. When you can do that, I'll be here waiting for you. End quote. And while it seems like Simon should be a sinister force, since, you know, this is a FNAF book after all, it's actually an expression of... Oh, love. so that's Margie what the created intro the small means. Doll named Simon with a walkie-talkie inside of him that allows Jake's father to speak to his son, distorting his voice to make him sound younger. Simon, every night, insists that Jake speak about what the real Jake is doing, the one who isn't afflicted with cancer. The one who is outside playing with his friends. All of this was intended to give Jake hope, with Margie updating the doll every few nights with food stains and scrapes on his knees to reflect the adventures that the real Jake has been having. It's a beautifully sad story with some legitimate oh, that's surprises nice. that I'm actually not going to spoil here. But the reason I bring it up is that, strangely, it is the only one of the 18 Fazbear Fright stories so far that has no explicit connection to FNAF at all. Yeah, Zero. as well. Every other story thus far has mentioned a Fazbear pizzeria or connected back to a familiar animatronic in some way. This one doesn't. Yes, it does have some lore connection to the ongoing Stitch Wraith storyline, but the lack of anything FNAF stands out like a sore thumb when every 
other story thus far has connected back in some way, which is why well, it connects Jake's with the crying child because, so like, the Jake's brain thing, you know, because, like, he got his frontal lobe, but becomes much more noteworthy when you consider that he has a brother named Michael, his only living family. And not only that, this is how Michael is described in the book quote, he's well, he's a little different, he's intense about making money, and he's really good at it, just the way he is can make him seem like he's not human so he's like a cyborg with bad programming end quote hmm two brothers what named michael who gets compared to a human robot hybrid where have i heard that one before father it's me michael why did that scare me stuff, why did i get jump deeper. scared by that i literally got jump scared by that cutaway be a walkie talkie just like we see in sister location heck you see him communicating through the walkie talkie that is in a plushie in the real jake it's simon the doll with a walkie talkie inside of him in the games it's psychic friend fredbear with a walkie talkie both children suffer from a severe head wound jake oh yeah tumor and crying child yeah the books are kind of like jake a different version doll, of like the actual story to the stitch rape, sharing that endoskeleton with another soul named Andrew. In the games, could it be that our crying child dies in the hospital and goes on to possess psychic friend Fredbear, which then somehow gets him passed into the Golden Freddy suit, where he then shares it with another soul named Cassidy. And all of this is happening in a story that has no connection to FNAF, but very clearly has a connection to FNAF. I'm just saying that the absence makes it all the more conspicuous. In short, I'm not convinced that the FNAF survival logbook is solved or anything like like that. Right now, I'm just not sure the methodology for arriving at a final name is really as solid as I'd like it to be to enter my personal headcanon. But strangely enough, the name Evan feels like we're onto something. It has some very compelling evidence to support it from the real Jake story. So at this point, I want to hear from you. Let me know. Are you sold on the crying child being Evan alongside his older brother Mike? Or is this yet another example of Scott trying to bury the lead a bit and confuse us by using the same name a bunch of times? Shoving Michael in a bunch of places where he doesn't belong. All I know is that I can't wait for the next book coming out in March. At this point, forget Security Breach. It's all about those sick book drops, my friends. Because let's be honest with ourselves. At this point, uncovering the lore of FNAF requires more reading than your typical JRPG. But hey, that's just oh. a theory. A game <laughs> theory. Thanks for watching. Okay, so honestly... I'd say this was a good theory. I like how it doesn't have a definitive answer, and a lot of this is just, like, MatPat speculating on the whole theory, and even using his own evidence to try and prove the name Evan, but at the same time also not jumping to conclusions and saying that, oh, it is Evan, like, because of this. Like, he actually is, like, skeptical, where it's like, oh, okay, like, here's another evidence to prove that his name could be Evan, but at the same time, Scott could be messing with us by putting the name Michael, you know, in random places to mess with the people. And honestly, I like that. I like that this theory was not just like jumping to, Jesus, jumping to conclusions or didn't have a definitive answer. Like, I like that. And the fact that as well, it was mainly just like him talking about these theories and like the way they're doing it is cool like because of course he knows how to actually do theories because he does this for a living so i think that's why he has credibility here and i think that's why the video is interesting and the theory is interesting and that's why i kind of like it honestly so yeah i think it's a good theory i think it's a really good theory but at the same time i also think it's a really good like way to sort of like analyze theories as well to like show the audience like you know that there is sort of like a difference between like well not really but you know what i mean is like there's like certain steps to have a good theory where you can have a good theory but to make it like solid you have to have methodology like good methodology which is really good honestly i really like that this is actually a good video but yeah anyways guys if you enjoyed the like and share my channel see you next one bye